Hi, I'm Tim Van Milligan. Today we're going to talk about rear ejection. I got an email from a customer and he asked, do you have to have the uh, nose cone come off to push the parachute out? And the answer is no, you can use rear ejection. And that's what this is right here. Instead of pushing the nose off and this nose is glued on, uh, what happens is the ejection charge goes off and it kicks the rear out like this. And your motor would be housed in your motor tube and then you would have a parachute or a streamer attached. Um, a lot of rockets use rear ejection. We have a lot of kits that use it, like this pyramid here. Um, this is called the Space Speedster. It also has rear ejection uh, attached by a shock cord. Um, the SR-72 Darkbird also has rear ejection, and this one comes out completely and then these, these little flaps kick up and then this glides down. Um, now, if you're designing a kit for rear ejection, I would recommend that you use a Kevlar shock cord. And basically, you're going to attach the Kevlar shock cord to the nose like you'd normally do uh, before you glue the nose on, because once the nose is glued on, you can't get it attached. Um, Kevlar, the advantage of it is it's very strong and it has a lot of heat resistance. So um, unlike a rubber shock cord, it's not going to degrade over time, so your rocket will last a long time. Um, your engine pod needs to have a centering ring on the front because that is what protects everything in here from the ejection charge. Um, you can also take some um, wadding, and once you wrap your parachute up, now when you wrap your parachute, don't wrap the strings around the parachute because the parachute will need to unfurl pretty quickly. So I just lay the strings inside and then just wrap the canopy around the outside like this. And then you can take some wadding and this gives you a little extra protection and wrap that around the outside. Um, I always keep my front centering ring a little bit further back from the end of the tube so that I can take the shock cord and just wrap it around like this, just wind it up. You can slide it inside the rocket like that. And then it's all prepped and ready to go. Slide the engine in and this one's gone. Um, this is also a rear ejection rocket. This is a two-stage rocket. Um, basically, it's, it's pretty long, so the ejection charge has to get all the way up to the top to, to ignite the top motor. Uh, but then this is so long that it's going to be stable as it comes down. So to do the, um, to keep that from happening, we do want to kick the pot out the back. And again, it's set up the same way with a shock cord and it's attached to the front. This one has a streamer. A streamer you can just wrap around. Um, and again, like before, I like to have the shock cord wrap around the, the front of the tube like this. And you'll notice this one here has a couple of vent holes on the side of the rocket. Um, that is to allow the exhaust gases to go all the way up to the, to the top of the motor. Um, there's cold air in here, and the cold air has to be pushed out of that tube so that the hot air can get through to ignite the top motor. Uh, this only works with black powder motors. It doesn't work with composites. Um, if you're using composites, you have to use electronics in the upper stage. So this is a two-stage rocket, and, and it's kind of, people always ask, does, does the top motor ignite? And the answer is yes, but it's got to happen real quick um, before that the motor kicks out, because if the motor kicks out too early, the top stage isn't going to ignite. Um, so I like to have a lot of good friction on this one in the front. Um, so that it doesn't kick off prematurely. Um, and basically that's all there is to uh, rear ejection. Uh, my name is Tim Van Milligan. This is the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.